Good morning, everybody. I trust that you guys are doing well. Again, just such a privilege for us to be able to study God's Word together. And uh, as we continue through this, this devotional through the book of Psalms, um, and we want to be looking this morning at Psalm chapter 16. So let's read together Psalm chapter 16. David writes, Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. And so what we see is, is uh, David writing this, this psalm of trusting in God. Um, it's this prayer that he writes to God. He's, a, he's affirming that God is ultimately his hope and his reward. And while we don't have time to work through the psalm in, in detail this morning, I really want to just highlight for us just a couple of things that we could meditate on as we keep our eyes fixed on Christ today. <clears throat> and so the first thing I want to look at is, is really to quote the second half of, of verse 2, where David says, Apart from God, we have no good thing. See, David is probably writing the psalm um, in, a, in a very um, pleasant time in his life. Um, he doesn't seem to be enduring much suffering at this point when he's writing this. Um, he's probably already reigning as king. He alone. Uh, he also affirms in verse six that uh, the boundary lines, the, the gods, um, appoint a lot to him. His his um, what's happening to him in his life um, has been pleasant. Has fallen in favorable places. But it's amazing how he starts verse two, and he's saying that even though he has many material blessings, many things to be thankful for, he's he's reigning as the king, and he's probably enjoying a time of peace in his kingdom. Um, that he starts out and he says that ultimately, only God is the true definition of any good thing that he might have. Nothing else in this life can compare to the goodness of God, the perfection, the righteousness, the holiness of God himself. John writes to us in his, in his first epistle in 1 John, he says that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. He alone is perfectly good. And what's also amazing is that this isn't just a, a statement of fact explaining to us the attributes of God, that only God alone is good. And while that is true, what David writes is also profound. He says that apart from you, God, apart from God, I have, I have no good thing. So God is not some distant deity. He's not some good God that watches us from afar, but rather we get to experience him. We get to be in relationship with him. We get to partake of him. So the ultimate reward that we as Christians have, that we who have trusted in Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior have, is not ultimately eternal life with him. It's not ultimately freedom from suffering in the life to come, but it's ultimately that we get God himself as our very good reward and of course even though David is writing this in a in a very good time of his life in a pleasant time of his life um, how much more are these words an anchor to our soul when we're going through difficult trying times that uh, that because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross and if we would trust in that through faith that we get God and we can, with David, say with confidence that we have a good thing, despite the circumstances that we are having in our lives. And my prayer is also that, that based on this verse, based on fixing your eyes and trusting in these promises that God alone is good and that we get, to, we get God, is that that would also empower you through the Holy Spirit to be putting to death the misdeeds of the body. You know, so often, again, we, 
we fall into temptation. We, we sin and we give into temptation because sin looks so appealing. It looks so good. But when we would trust that apart from God, we have no good thing. He alone is only good and the only good thing we have in our lives. That if we would fix our eyes and that if we would put our trust and our hope in that, that that would keep us from sinning today. That that would be the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That we would be able to put to death any temptations um, that we might have in our lives. David also affirms in verse 5, he says, Lord, you alone are my portion. And my cup, you make my lot secure. So again, his trust, his dependence, his delight even is in God himself and not in the things that he gets from God. And let that be our heart's cry also, is that we don't look to what we have. Um, and we don't even look in these times to what we don't, don't have, to what we've lost. But we look to God himself as our hope, as our trust, as our portion, as our blessing. That he is our reward and he is our hope. And then secondly, as we look at the psalm, the second point that I want to unpack for us is that our enjoyment of God's goodness is eternal. David goes on in verse, verse 9 and 10. He says, therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. Nor will you let your faithful one See decay. So his hoping and trusting in God extends beyond just his life on earth, just beyond his mortal life. And he actually looks into the life to come. He was secure in his salvation that God would protect him from death and would actually grant him eternal life. And so while he was writing about his own hope and trusting in God, we also know that he was writing um, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit uh, about Jesus Christ who was to come. Peter gets up and he quotes from this very psalm uh, on the day of Pentecost when he preaches that sermon where, where 3,000 people get added to their number. And he quotes the psalm again saying that this was fulfilled in Jesus Christ, that he ultimately was the king who did not see decay. He was the king who was promised all those years before that would rule on David's throne forever and ever. He would not see decay. He would be protected from the realm of the dead. And we know that Jesus Christ was raised on the third day. He, he was crucified. He was laid to rest in a tomb. But on the third day, the tomb was empty. Jesus Christ was raised. And this is our hope is that if we would trust in him, if we would look to him as our only hope, our only reward, we would only trust in what Jesus Christ has done, that we too would get to experience eternal life, that we would be resurrected with Jesus. Um, it, it's, it's our hope that he's coming back for a bride to rescue those who are eagerly awaiting the return of their bridegroom. So would you look to him today? Would you uh, keep your eyes fixed on him? Would you trust him? as your eternal reward, so that we can also, with David, say that we have a delightful inheritance, not in the things we get to experience here, but in that we get God himself. Enjoy him today. Taste and see that he is good. God bless.